welcome to Wellness Wednesday. These short weekly videos are meant as a resource for you, our colleagues, and our community to improve daily living, body, mind, and spirit. Brought to you by the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health, my co-host, Tim Michaels, and I will have a new topic that we focus on each week. This week's topic was suggested by Tim, and we are joined by Dr. Reggie Eady today. Tim, can you tell us a little bit about our focus of this week of renewal? Sure. So it's been a personal goal of mine for the last couple of years. Um, I think we're all used to periods in our life where we think, when this is over, I will do this. And when you're studying for an exam, it makes sense, right? I'll keep my focus. When the exam's over, I'm going partying and have a good time. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that that waiting for something to be over, you miss an awful lot. So in the last 12 months, we've all had a shared experience of a pandemic. But it's been tandem with political unrest and racial unrest. In addition to the things happening in our own homes, our own bodies, our own hearts, there's been so much for so long that I've heard so many people say, when we return to normal, when this happens, 12 months of waiting for the sun to come out. And so I've been trying to figure out, where's my little moments during the day that I feel more alive, more hope, and more inspired? Renewal. I'm not trying to diminish anything we've all been through, because it continues. But the basic truth is, inevitably in life, it'll be good, and there's going to be really dark times. That's just the way it is. But how do we renew ourselves, even from good times? How do we get the energy back up? So I'd, I'd like to start with you, Reggie, if you're okay, and just ask, how have you noticed in yourself over the last 12 months um, efforts that you brought into your daily life to help renew yourself? Yeah, you know, so I, I've got to be open and honest with you both. It was not easy. And in fact, I will call it sort of a delayed response. And here's what I mean, you know, so the last 12 months have been, oftentimes people use the word unprecedented. I like to use anomalous. It's been an anomalous experience because, you know, it's, it's unlike any experience I've ever had. You know, here I think to myself, emergency medicine physician, I've been a healthcare administrator for many years, and I've seen it all. But you know, just when you get comfortable, God comes in and, and sort of laughs at you and exposes you to something new. So it took me a while to figure out this void, uh, Kathy and Tim, that I had in my life because that I was experiencing several different emo emotions and I'm still reflecting on it now that I'm sort of out of that state since the pandemic start, let's say it started like in, in March, I'll say. You know, there were feelings of anxiety, fear, and I'm just being open and honest. As a leader, I too experience anxiety, fear, anger, the sadness for our colleagues and the people who lost their lives, uncertainty uh, about the organization, uh, you know, personal things like weight gain. I mean, I gained uh, that COVID-19 pounds. I mean, I gained it. Um, so a bunch of personal insecurities that as a secure person, I'd never experienced before in my life. All of those things that you know, we as Christians are taught on how to manage and how to control. So I guess it really wasn't to answer the question until about October, I'd say, when the second surge began, that I began to settle down in mind, body, and spirit and reflect. And then for some strange reason, a good friend of mine who still lives in Michigan uh, reminded me of Isaiah 26 and three that says something like, and I, I can't quote it, so forgive me. And I'll end here, it says something like, uh, those who keep their mind stayed on God, he will give you perfect peace. And that's sort of when I snapped out of it. That's when I, I understood that, you know, I need to take a step back. I need to get myself back together. I need to get back to the ideal body weight I had before the pandemic uh, and keep my mind on God and let those distractions not bother me or, or distract me uh, or confuse me or create securities. And so I finally landed there. And now every single day I take time with the very same friend every morning. Uh, and sometimes at night we reflect on biblical scriptures that keep us grounded and keep us in the right place. They keep our minds in perfect peace. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I think so I what, had a very similar I was, experience. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you, Kathy, what, what, what have you experienced? Yeah, I, I had sort of a phased approach as well. In the initial period, my job changed 180 degrees. I had to learn a whole new job working with COVID patients. We were figuring it out day to week to month, what we needed to do and how we needed to do it. I was freaking out and trying to keep myself safe and trying to keep my family safe. It was not easy. 
So all of my self-care went in the in the garbage can. I did I did a lot of nothing except worry and trying to figure out what this new job was every day. A lot of us just having a new work every day. And then just before the second wave, I settled down a little bit and was able to kind of reconnect and started back with some meditation and some mindfulness and also started t taking long walks in the woods with nice. my dog. And connecting with nature is my spiritual place where I connect the closest with my creator. And I was able to kind of come back into myself and just kind of let go, just like you said. It, 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 it's an evolution and continues to be an evolution. <laughs> It continues to be an evolution, not an easy path, not, an, but learned a lot, mm -hmm. learned a lot, yeah. Absolutely. How about you, Tim? What did you find Sorry. in these past 12 months? It's funny, since I'm a New Englander through and through, um, if there's one thing that's true about us is we're very season dependent. So when COVID started in the spring and as a natural introvert, that was my easiest time. I could work here as many hours as I needed to, I could do whatever you asked, but peace and heaven in the backyard. It was very quiet. People were not out trying to socialize. We weren't doing that. So up until August, the summertime, the yard, doing things outside, and it was beautiful quiet. But that really changed for me in the fall between the health crisis and the shorter days. So all of a sudden having to be in the house and be isolated and not be feeling well um, left this big gap. So mine's almost kind of mirror opposite. And what I was finding worked before in my life wasn't working. Um, but what I have been finding that really does bring me renewal is being very careful about the people I'm around. Um, and there are people who support me in being curious. So I just want to connect to something that you said, Reggie. I grew up uh, on a street where there was mostly farms and we were very Catholic. Uh, went to a Catholic school, but the man at the top of the street would walk his cows with yokes on them. Wow. So I remember being in third grade and we're doing Matthew 1125 and, and Sister Assumpta is saying, come to me all who are labor and burden um, and I will give you rest. Uh, put my yoke upon you. So I'm only eight years old and what I know a yoke is, is where you put the cow's head. So this whole notion of rest got really screwed up in my head because I'm thinking it's a big, heavy wooden thing to carry, so I'm not getting it. Why would I come to you and rest? But as an adult, and I've talked to our mission leaders about this, I said, the Bible is peppered with these examples. Jesus feeds 5,000 and rests, and he does something else and he goes off for a rest. And the seventh day is for rest. Clearly humans haven't gotten this yet. That one of the simplest ways of renewal is how do you find a daily rest? Washing right. your hands, watching the sunset, taking a breath before the next call, those all count. But rest isn't easy. But it appears to be a pivotal role of renewal that's been going on for thousands of years and we're just not getting it. And that is a real skill to rest in the middle of misery like this. Yeah, and you know, sometimes when you're like, uh, when you're like a, a guinea pig on the on the spinning wheel, and uh, when the weekend comes, you're so used to just continuously moving that you're right, it's hard to rest. And thanks for sharing that. It's very hard. And I mean, I caught myself planning Sunday. By three o'clock, you're going to stop. You'll sit in the chair. You paid for the chair. You have to vacuum around the chair. Go sit in the chair. Right. And I have yet to succeed at it. Um, yeah. It's also this, but in any case, but it's that funny, it's that red. So my curiosity keeps coming back saying, well, if the Son of God needs to rest, what's my excuse going to be when I arrive? And what if the first question is, tell me, why didn't you rest? Well, God, you knew you had me working at Trinity. You knew there was a pandemic. <laughs> I just, you know, I can see my defense. But, and again, I, I kind of want to make sure that between the three of us and everybody watching us, you know, spirituality is definitely important to you, Reggie. It's important to myself and Kathy. Um, other people, it's their animals, it's their families, it's cooking, it's knitting, it's whatever you actually makes you feel alive again. And that you forget, you almost forget for a moment what the world is like wrapped around you. So the last thought I want to share is just whatever that is for people, just try to remember it, breathe into it, and do it. 
whatever it is that helps you forget the world around you sometimes. So um, we wanted to keep this short so everybody would listen to the end. I want to thank both of you. Um, thank you, Reggie, for your time. Um, and we look forward to seeing everybody next week for Wellness Wednesday. Thank you. This helped me out a lot. I, I, the things that you guys said, I certainly will share it with myself every single day and with my team as well as we reflect. So thank you. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.